About 500 million years ago, life diversified on a scale the world had never seen before, and most of the major animal groups appeared for the very first time. We call it the Cambrian Explosion. And along with these early forms of our modern animal groups came some relatives that, to our standards, look like they came from another planet. Allow me to introduce you to Hallucigenia, an animal that was so bizarre scientists initially didn't know which way was up. Let's get right into it. Hallucigenia was alive about 508 million years ago and got to about five centimeters long, max, very tiny. Their life was restricted to the oceans along with every other animal alive at the time. The transition to land hadn't been made yet that we know of. This creature was first discovered in 1909 by a paleontologist named Charles Doolittle Walcott. He noticed this tiny little fossilized invertebrate that had what looked like seven pairs of spikes coming out of one side of its body and seven pairs of squigglies coming out of the other. Unbelievable that that level of detail was even preserved considering it was alive half a billion years ago. And that has to do with the location he founded it, the Burgess Shale, an incredible fossil formation situated in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. It's pretty much mentioned anytime the Cambrian period is being talked about because a massive abundance of some of the most well-preserved Cambrian fossils have been found here, like 60,000 individual fossils. And these provide an incredible snapshot of the diversity of life forms that existed half a billion years ago, from the earliest arthropods and chordates, the group vertebrates are part of, to the earliest worms and other soft-bodied organisms. It takes exceptional conditions for soft-bodied animals to fossilize well, and the Burgess Shale is an oasis of exceptional conditions. Here's why. If you want to become a fossil, the most important thing is to get buried quickly. Take note. Think about it. Once an animal dies, it doesn't just get swallowed by the ground. It typically stays exposed to the elements and other animals for a really long time. Then it gets all messed up and doesn't fossilize. So ideally, if you want to become a fossil, you want to be buried by a landslide or a mudslide. And in the case of the Burgess Shale fossils, it seems as though these animals were living in underwater mud banks that would occasionally turn into mudslides due to the water currents. An instant berry. A sad day for the little guys, but now we get to look at them 500 million years later, which is just so fucking crazy when you think about it like that. You know what? Why don't I just tell you a little bit about the Cambrian period as a whole? <laughs> Got a filing cabinet and I'm going to keep hitting my elbow on it. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Cambrian period as a whole to provide context for the overall vibe that Hallucigenia was living in. The Cambrian period was like mother nature's first acid trip or nature's trial run, or honestly what you'd expect to see in a movie about an alien planet. Shit was weird in the best way possible. As I had mentioned earlier, it's often called the Cambrian explosion because this is when most of the major animal groups appeared for the very first time in the fossil record. And that's not to say there weren't any before, like sponges and jellies, but all of a sudden it was like boom. And not to say this happened overnight at all. This was a period of millions of years, which in the time span of the entire earth, 4.6 billion years is kind of overnight. So it is like a boom. So there were animals like Hallucigenia, of course, and also Anomalocaris and Opabinia and Morella, and also trilobites, which would end up sticking around for a long time. And jawless fish with a backbone. And those jawless fish led to the evolution of every other animal with a backbone, like us. It's not that this massive diversification was due to a natural global warming period, which pumped more oxygen into the oceans, allowing life to explode. But I'm gonna go more in depth when I redo my History of Life short series into the long form format that I've mentioned. So to summarize this massive tangent, the Burgess Shale is fucking sick and so is the Cambrian period. So when Charles Doolittle Walcott examined the fossil of this tiny, spiky, squiggly creature, he identified it as an early annelid worm, specifically related to bristle worms that I talked about last week. And he gave it the scientific name Canadia Sparsa. Canadia, Canadia. You'd think it'd be Canadia, but I have a feeling that it's Canadia. They love to do that shit in scientific Latin, don't they? Whatever. Either way, he called it Canadia because it was found in Canada. Then, decades later in 1977, a British paleontologist named Simon Conway Morris took a closer look at this Canadian annelid worm. And he thought, no, no fucking way that's an annelid worm. This is something weirder than that. And he renamed the creature Hallucigenia sparsa. Much cooler, and as you could probably guess, due to its acid trip appearance, or as Conway Morris put it, its bizarre dreamlike quality. He also guessed that the spiky side was was the bottom half and the squiggly side was the top half. That the spikes were like stilts that they used to move around and the squigglies were tentacles with mouths at the ends of each of them. I think that man was actually on acid when he examined this thing. But somehow they let that slide for 14 years until 1991 when his idea was literally flipped upside down with an examination of new even better preserved hallucigenia fossils found in China. At the Qingzhong fossil site, these deposits are extremely similar to the Burgess Shale in that they formed under similar conditions and have both revealed an unbelievable amount of diversity during the Cambrian period. A team of paleontologists were able to see more details in these fossils and concluded hallucigenia did not 
have stilts and tentacles with mouths at the ends of each of them. Now, the tentacles were legs with what looked like claws, and the stilts were spikes coming out of its back. The researchers then compared this new reorganized hallucinogenia to similar species found at the same site, so alive at the same time, such as Zunujin and Aishaya, which are fucking badass names, and Microdictin, which I can only assume someone was feeling very silly when they named it that. And based on their analysis, the team grouped hallucinogenia, along with the animals that I just mentioned, as lobopods, which are kind of wormy-like creatures with stubby legs that are closely related to arthropods. Today, lobopods are tardigrades and velvet worms. And hallucinogenia, along with the rest of the worm-like creatures just mentioned, were put in the same group as velvet worms. <laughs> that feels much better, doesn't it? Feels like the pieces are coming together. Well, it doesn't end there, because at this point, they still hadn't identified the head. Yes, we have not even mentioned the head yet. There are the spiky and squiggly sides of the hallucinogenia fossil taken care of, but there is also a dark blob at one of the ends. Presumed to be the head, but no one could ever say for sure because there weren't those typical head details that you would expect to find that could confirm that idea. Like some scientists thought, what if it was just a puddle of fluid that leaked out after hallucinogenia died? What if that was their thing when they died? Just leaking out fluid that looks like a head. And that question remained unanswered for another 24 years. That's okay. Okay, take your time. A whole 106 years after the first discovery of this creature, 2015, a team of researchers were able to get their hands on even better preserved hallucinogenia fossils and use new science shit. They used an electron microscope, which allowed the scientists to see in incredible detail that the blobby side was not the head side. The head was the opposite side. They found two little eye spots and a map with a ring of needle-like teeth inside of it. They also found an extra three pairs of appendages closer to the head that might have been sensory structures or maybe used like tentacles. And that same year in 2015, a new relative of hallucinogenia was described, found in those fossil beds that I mentioned in China. Collinsium, named after Desmond Collins, who discovered the fossil. It's like hallucinogenia on steroids. Steroids. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's really all I wanted to tell you. The story of hallucinogenia ends there. For now. And before we go into the outro, I want to give you a quick heads up for next week's video. I've been preparing extra content because I'm going to be going to Puerto Rico for two weeks. Fun fact, I'm Puerto Rican, well, half Puerto Rican, and won't be making videos while I'm there. So I was going back and forth on how I was going to handle the long form content. Like, am I going to make two half-assed videos that I will eventually want to redo because they're half-assed? Or do I go a few weeks without posting long form content, which is absolutely not ideal? And I landed on the hallucinogenia video and a quiz. I occasionally do little quizzes on my Instagram. Instagram stories. And I thought it would be interesting to try it in the long form format. So I'm going to take all of the long form videos that I've made so far, create one to three questions out of each of them, and then present them to you in a multiple choice fashion in a video. This will provide a fun way to test your knowledge so far, while also giving me some flexibility to prepare for the trip without spreading myself too thin. So if you want to participate, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it and make sure you study i.e. watch my videos. And I'm excited to see the scores that you get in the comments. In the meantime, you can keep up with my daily short form content on TikTok and Instagram. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya!